um, on leaving, if I was leaving a bar, I, I always like to have a look at it, drive down to the tippy and have a look at it, um, run, in, run in the river, set across the river mouth, height of the waves, whether they're breaking, whether there's lots of little comas or whether they're big dumpers. The decision to cross the bar at the start of a voyage is much easier to make than the decision to come back in, and it's much less final. I've turned around in the river on about four or five occasions. Uh, same thing, I've had a look at it, taken the boat down the river and said, no, it's not for me. Because from the tippy it can be deceptive. You're deceptive how tall they are, how heavy they are, how much runs in the river. Um, no, I'd prefer to be a live cow than a dead hero and I'm not in the sort of practice of satisfying the people on the tippet either if I can help it. There's been many occasions where we've decided not to sail. Um, it's, it's a bit of a luxury when you're at home because you can go down and if you don't like the way the bar's looking well you're at home, you, you get to go back to your own bed that night. So um, it's, a, it's a lot less pressured call than coming in, sitting out off the bar wanting to come home. Even so, there can be subtle pressures on you, the skipper, when you're making the decision to go out. Certainly if you want to be fishing, you, you don't want to be locked in port too many days. So you might decide to, to push it a bit and sail when the bar's a bit rough to get out so, you don't, so you're not trapped in port, so to speak. But unquestionably, the decision to come in is the hard one. And there are lots of factors that make your life as a skipper difficult at decision time. Going on pretty good, eh? When I'm coming in, it's a bit harder because you can't get a physical picture of it, so you have to use the other things. You, you take into account the swell, the swell you've had during the trip, the swell you've got at the moment, and quite often you get a ground swell that you can't actually, you know, it's not noticeable, but if you, if you read, look at your sounder, we use the sounder a lot, the sounder soon tells you how much actual measurement of lift there is, whether it's two metres or three metres or two and a half. Um, and then there's the other things like people on the tip heads. <laughs> if there's a heap of people there, you know it's, you know, it's marginal. Yeah, it's a bit ghoulish really, but it's a bit like motorsport. Um, people tend to go to the corner where the accidents are, and that's the same with the tip heads. If you see a lot of headlights there at night time, um, probably don't even try it, because <laughs> um, it means the bar is marginal. Because they have basically the number of people on the tip head are there here to watch an accident. What the gladiator spectators on the tip head have come to see is what happens when a skipper has made a wrong decision. For in marginal conditions, choosing to stay out or come in is the most important single decision the skipper must make. But it's just then, in marginal conditions, at the end of a hard working voyage with a freezer full of fish, that the skipper is under the greatest pressure, professionally and personally. When you get to the bars and you see that they are cracking and um, you've got to make a decision whether to go in or not, it's, it's a very hard decision to make for the simple reason you know that 200 metres through that white water you can be tied up to a wharf, you can be in comfort, you can go and have a beer, you can go home. And that temptation is very, very strong. Um, it, it takes a lot to override it and say, no, we're not going in, we're staying out. I think it's something that a lot of people don't do enough. But as I say, I know I've been in that situation with uh, how it's only 200 metres here, we can get through it. Um, the old rule, in doubt, stay out. If in doubt, stay out, yeah, it's definitely, but it does take a lot of doing. 
Oh, there's numerous pressures involved. There always is with fishing. Number of days at sea, number of days the catch is on board at sea, um, turnaround times, reason for the turnaround times, air freight, etc. Um, oh, fuel, weather, either previous or coming weather. Like sometimes it may be going to get worse. So you have to weigh up how much fuel you've got left, whether you can stand out for another blow. Um, yeah, there's a few factors involved. When your body's totally wrung out, you've had three or four days of rough weather, and then you're pushing it to the limit. You know, you can't sleep, it's too rough to sleep. You're just forcing yourself to stay awake. And that's when you make bad decisions and, and little thoughts like that creep in, you know, and I think that that sort of thing has caused the odd person to go in when they shouldn't have. It's always a hard one. Once you've decided you want to go home, you can see the lights of uh, Auckland. And it is hard to stay out there when you know that you want to come in and have the comforts, but at the same time, you've got to weigh the safety of that. You know, it's like saying whether you want to go down the motorway at 180 k, you know that's going to be dangerous, so you don't do it. Um, basically, uh, it's every individual skipper's decision. Um, yeah, I personally have had to had to approach the bar on numerous occasions and on and and turn away because I've made the decision. Um, owners processes etc might not agree with it but the name of the game is the you know if it's too dangerous it's too dangerous i have to confess that uh, my boss wasn't all that happy with the way things went on the bar that day um yeah they they weren't overly impressed they were happy we'd come in we were full of fish they were happy about that yep. the important thing everybody needs to remember here is that a case of fish has no value to anybody until it's landed at the wharf. It's worth nothing floating about in the tide. Okay, the sooner you get it in, the more it'll hold its value. But when it's rough and you're trying to make up your mind whether to come in or not, remind yourself that everybody loses if you don't make it. And you stand to lose a hell of a lot more than money. I'm not actually a fan of going in a, a, a breaking bar in the darkness. I'd rather actually uh, um, stay out, you know, stay out, anchor up offshore, and then have a look next morning. Because once again, you know, if it's um, if it's the top of the tide, you've virtually got like a you know 12 hour stand down to the top of the next one. So um, which is a good, you know, which can sometimes be a good night's sleep. Because if the bar's been quite, if the bar's unworkable, you've normally had a pretty pretty tough time coming up the coast. That, that particular crossing, my first one, there was a guy I was fishing alongside in a smaller boat and he chose to stay out there and he actually he had an uncomfortable night but nothing too dangerous and, and in hindsight at the time I recall thinking that would, that would have been a better option. But you never know, it could have been 10 or 15 knots stronger the wind out there and he could have had a hell night, you know, it, it's it's, these are the choices we have to make. If you if if you think it's marginal, and you, even if you're not sure, just don't try it. There's another tide. There's another day. Um, on the west coast, if it's if it's a southwesterly airstream, just bite the bullet and go to Westport because Westport will be good. And if it's northerly, you know, try Greymouth or go to Jackson's. <laughs> um, but yeah, the overall name of the game is yeah, just keep yourself and your crew alive. There, there has been quite a few occasions where I um, have approached the bar and either from advice ashore or on my own call I've decided not to try and cross it, it's just too much. On those occasions we just uh, dodge back out to sea. We can get offside with your crew very quickly. Um, they can uh, they can only see uh, the fact that they can get in shore or get into port. Um, if you've made the decision and it's after the tide and uh, well, you normally just put the head into it and dodge away, just dive away into it, come back the next high tide and have a look. 
I, was, I remember one night spending the whole night with about six boats stooging around just dodging the weather it was too rough to go in and we're waiting around the daylight to go in and oh we had a hell night that was a shocker um, but um, as daylight was breaking there was a couple of, I heard a couple of guys talking and they were saying things like you know it's shit I hope that bar's good in the morning and the other guy saying I don't care what it's like I'm going in there I'm not staying out here and I, and I could see where he's coming from I could understand but that's just not an option you can't do that I mean if it's no good it's no good you just have to accept that if you've got doubt about the bar it will be normal practice to call someone up on shore to get advice on the bar because no, it doesn't matter how many years you've been fishing, you still it still pays to get advice for a bad bar. Um, if I'm approaching the bar and I know that it is going to be a bit dodgy or rough, I'll, I'll always take advice from a shore. Um, whether I follow that advice or not is up to me, but I'll always listen. I will, I will ring up and get advice from the tip head um, on, on the flow in the river, on the set across the front, how heavy they are, the lulls between the brakes, etc. But I don't really expect someone to instruct me from the tip head, mainly because I'm on the boat and they're not. Actually, getting people to say do or don't is not, you know, it, it's really up to the skipper on the day. It is the skipper's call at the end to decide to come in. Like most skippers that call up to get advice, ask someone on shore that they trust to have a look. Um, most of those tips down there, like on the breakwaters and that there, you'll find somebody sitting there just about 24 hours a day. I think it's a bit of a circus down there. They all come down to see who's going to ask up, but there's always somebody there.